Hi everybody and welcome back to Not Another Bonsai channel. I'm actually really glad you joined me today because I received something in the post from a fellow YouTuber and I was excited to have a look at it and see what he sent me. Right, so here we have the little package that arrived and uh, let's just open this up and uh, see what's inside. Now I believe he said he was going to send me some more seeds. So let's take a look in here. All right, so here we go. So these have come from Jamie over on Keeping It Koi, a fantastic chap. I really do recommend you head over to his channel. I will put a link to his channel just up here, and there will be one in the description box below. But uh, yeah, he's a, a bit of a koi specialist, and he also does a lot of bonsai work too. So really interesting uh, guy, really has a really interesting channel, and I do strongly recommend that you go over to his channel, take a look at some of his videos, and if you like what he does you know subscribe to his channel he's, he's a good chap and i think he's also just reached 2000 subscribers so it's quite a milestone congratulations on that jamie good going and uh, onwards and upwards with your with your channel and uh, yeah thanks again for these seeds so if we just take that sticker off that he's put on seal in the, the bag oh i haven't really made the best of jobs doing that but at least it's open and let's take a look at some of these seeds. So these are a type of maple. And the type of maple tree that these came from is the, the snake bark maple tree. Now, I've never grown these before. And uh, he, he said that a, a customer of his had a, a beautiful snake bark maple tree in their garden that I believe they wanted to cut down. But he convinced them to keep it. And uh, I guess through... The uh, recommendation uh, that he gave of you know the trim back some of the branches and that they let him go home with some some of these seeds and I think he had so many of them so it, it, he said to me you know hey Gav did you want to try growing them too so I said yeah go on go on Jamie yeah send me some seeds and and I give it a try and yeah has he sent me some seeds well there's a there's a good few in here and you can see they're all on the like the stem you know all of those uh, are connected together there so that's fantastic. Um, I think his growing recommendations for these were you uh, plant them up now, keep them warm for a good three months, then let them go cold or let them freeze for another three months, then let them get warm again for another three months, and then they should germinate. So thanks again for these, Jamie. That's they're excellent. I'll give them a go, see if I can germinate them, and you never know, you know, come next summer, you might see a snake bark maple tree as part of my bonsai collection. But, uh, you know, receiving these, these seeds, it got me thinking, what other ways are there to propagate plants or trees? And as you may know, if you've been following my channel for a while and, and you've watched some of my previous videos, I do like to try different ways to propagate plants and, and really grow trees on a budget. And uh, most of my collection is made up of trees that I've started from a young age and I've just grown and grown and grown into more mature trees. So apart from seeds, I'm also a fan of growing trees from cuttings. So these three trees, or I guess they're trees in development, you could call them, because they don't really look like bonsais just yet. But these are all grown from uh, cuttings. Well, apart from this one, but I'll tell you the story on that in a minute. So this is a smoke bush that I took at uh, end of last year. It took that as a little cutting and that's grown. It's that been out in leaf all of this summer. There's been some nice growth on that and that is on its way to becoming a little bonsai tree. You know, and this is a fantastic way of, of starting trees. You know, you don't have to go to, to these um, bonsai nurseries and spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds. You know, or sometimes even thousands, you know. So, I mean, there are places where you can buy bonsai trees for seven, eight, nine, ten thousand pounds. And, you know, if you have the money to do that, then by all means, you know, go and do it. But, uh, you know, I, I like the, the story. I like the, the challenge of trying to take a, a, a tree that I've grown from a very young age and then just see it through its journey. And it's a little bit like having a pet. 
you know, your pet lives their life with you and you live your life with them. And then they, they become your pet because of the shared experiences. And in a funny sort of way, bonsai is a bit like that. You know, you, you live your life with the tree and the tree lives its life with you. And so, you know, if, you know, after sort of 10, 15, 20 years, you know, some of these might, you know, some of these trees might look like fantastic looking bonsai trees. And to you, they will be special because they're your trees that you've grown from a young age, a seed or a cutting, and taken it to that stage of being a more mature looking tree. And from that angle, I guess you can understand and justify the high prices that you see with some of these trees because of all of the, the years of effort and work that's gone into them. But um, if you do it yourself, you have that personal attachment to it. And that for me is a special connection that you have with a bonsai tree. And that's ultimately why I like to start trees from a young age. So let's just put the smoke bush just over there. Right, so this one, this, uh, believe it or not, is a Leyland cypress. Now, Leyland cypress trees traditionally are grown or propagated by way of cuttings. And I do actually have a couple of these just down here, which I will show you real quick. So these are a couple of Leyland cypress cuttings that I've taken. Uh, the tips on that have gone slightly brown. But yeah, these uh, have been going for a little while now. Uh, no sign of any new shoots, but this traditionally is the way to propagate these trees. But this was grown from seed. And as you can see, I have have it grown through the side of this little model car because I'm hoping that over time, as it grows and grows and grows, the trunk will you know, fill up uh, and you know, as the tree grows, it will gradually sort of just overcome this, this car and just look as though, you know, way back when a seed fell into this, you know, th through the opening of this abandoned car and, uh, you know, this, this mighty tree has just grown over the top of it. And I think, you know, as the, the years in that pass, this tree will continue to grow and hopefully that will become quite a nice bonsai landscape for the future. Uh, let's just pop that to the side. So then we have this one. <laughs> Look, here we have a sycamore seed. Now these things, as you might see just back here, we have three great big sycamore trees. This time of year, these drop seeds by the millions. You'll see them all over the floor here, and it's just a continual game of just sweeping these up and yeah, just stopping them from germinating. Because if you leave these, they will find their way into every crevice, every a space in between the patio. They get on my bonsai trees. They, they get absolutely everywhere. And if you if you leave them, you know, as I say, they grow. And uh, come next year, come next spring, these uh, they can be a real nightmare to, to get out because like most maples, they put a, a long taproot down into the soil. And it can be a real bugger getting these out of, out of your pots. But yeah, it's been a a constant game of you know really ch chasing the seed you know, and just taking them out of all of the, the pots and that that they land on right so this tree is a, a jasmine and uh, we have a dra we have a jasmine growing in the garden and so what i did one one day during the springtime i was in the garden trimming back the jasmine shrub and i had you know a good bit of you know quite a few off cuts left over so this one looked quite interesting and I decided to see if I can grow it as a bonsai tree. And you can see I've put this wacky design in it, I've wrapped wire around, and it has established, there are plenty of roots in the pot. I keep this stone on here just to keep it in place, because it's quite a tall, lanky tree, and what with the winds and everything else, it could disturb it. But I think the day has come where we can remove the wire. Right, so removing the wire from the jasmine. Now, Traditionally, I don't like to cut wire off of trees uh, for a couple of reasons, really. One, it's, it's not very environmentally friendly. You know, it's, you, know you, you have this wire, it's, it's made, it's sourced from the ground, and you know, to use it once, cut it off, and then just throw, uh, throw it away, it's not that environmentally friendly. Uh, the second reason is expense. You know, money... Uh, you know, isn't doesn't grow on trees, and uh, it would be fantastic if it did, but it doesn't. And uh, you know, wire costs money. And you know, ideally, if I can, I like to 
reuse Y where I can and try to save it. Because you never know, this is quite heavy gauge wire that I've used on this tree. And there may be a project in the future where I can use this again. So it's just simply a case of, whoops, it's just simply a case of uncoiling the wire, holding the, it's very important that you, you know, when you do this, it's very important that you hold the trunk. So hold the trunk or the branch, then uncoil the wire. It's much the same as when you wire a tree, you support the branch, then you wrap the wire around. You don't just, you know, pu push the wire around or wind the wire around. You carefully, carefully put the wire around a branch to avoid any damage. And it's much the same when you take it off. Support the branch, or the trunk in this case, and gently, it's a little bit trickier when you have a piece of wire this long, but gently remove the wire off of the trunk. Yeah, so sometimes you have these sorts of problems where you're not quite sure how you wired it underneath the soil. Oh, here we go, here we go, we have a bit of movement now, and the wire is coming away from the soil. That's fantastic. So you can see what I mean, that's a very nice looking piece of wire that can be used again on a future bonsai. So we can see that we do have a few wire marks, or so quite deep wire gashes on this. There's quite a deep wire gash here. If we just spin the tree around for you, you can see there's quite a deep wire gash just here. And I think this section here, this, I mean, it, it has healed, but it doesn't look very good. So yeah, that is the, that is the jasmine, jasmine bonsai. Again, looks a strange looking tree at the minute, but I think, you know, in time as it heals and, and grows and recovers, it should become a very interesting, very interesting looking little bonsai tree. Right, so this little tree is my Catoniaster. And again, you know, this is another one that was taken as a cutting a couple of years back. And you know, what I like about a, a little tree like this is it's very petite, you know, and it, it's, uh, I, I like the small, you know, I prefer the smaller trees rather than the bigger ones. So with a little tree like this, it's simply just a case of working on your pads. And uh, you could argue that in the future, I may need to get rid of this branch because it's going downwards. Uh, there's a branch here that's also going downwards. But again, this isn't something that I'd want to do right now because I'm filming this near the end of October. So a lot of these printed decisions and, and uh, chops and that will have to be made sometime in the spring of next year. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very nice little tree. And, and it always this is why I'm really promoting the idea of starting trees from a very young age, because you get to really, you get to style it from the early point. So, you know, I put this curve in this tree when it was only a year or so old. And then of course, you know, once it has set and it starts establishing and, and growing, then you can start working on your pads and branch selection and everything else. And you end up with a bonsai tree that you've made from scratch and is completely yours. And with this tree, I like to just add this little warthog, just as a little ornament, perhaps not quite like that, but maybe like that just to give it a little bit of interest and make it look as though we have a warthog taking shelter underneath the Catoniaster tree. Right, so just down here, this is where I keep all of my willows. Now you might remember from a few videos back, I did my whole how to make a free bonsai tree. And that's why I showed you how to root willow cuttings and well, really great big fat willow cuttings at about the size of an inch or more. And it really was a challenge for myself and just a way of really getting you guys to really get used to propagation and, and working on your own trees that you can grow from the different trees and things that you can find around you. And if you can propagate cuttings and seeds, then it's a fantastic way of doing it. So this is one of the willows that I think didn't make it. You can see it's gone very dark. I think it's died, that one. I'm not quite convinced that that one is gonna make it. We have another one here that there is life in this, um, but again, this is another one that might surprise us, but again, there's no real 
no no bites or anything on that one so i'm not sure that one is going to make it but then these are the ones that did so we have this one you can see this is one of our fat ones it's quite a few leaves on here let's put them over there so this is one of our fat ones you can see plenty of new shoots came off of this it's very established in the pot uh, let's see the bottom yeah there's a few roots coming out the bottom of the pot so plenty of roots on that one that's a fantastic fat cutting that we just leave it it should grow and become a very nice tree this is another one of our fat ones very interesting shape on this one kind of has a bit of a curve oh and here we see there is one of the sycamore seeds we do not want that popped over there so again yep plenty of shoots on this and we, if we just look on the underside yeah plenty of roots coming out the bottom fantastic that one's in full health again leave that let it do its thing should become a very nice tree for the future uh, we also have a little one just in here just have these rocks on here just to keep them in place but again you know there's plenty of shoots on it a little bit of dye back on the tips if you just look at the bottom a few roots coming out the underside fantastic little plant that one that will grow and then the last one a bit of a, a twin this one a couple of well, actually three in this one that have all taken plenty of shoots and if you just look on the underside uh, a few roots are trying to peek out the bottom so again plenty of life in that one and if we just leave them let them do their thing they should all become very nice bonsai trees for the future but yeah willow is one of the easiest uh, easiest trees to propagate so if you're new to bonsai and uh, or you're new to taking cuttings and you're near a willow tree you know take some cuttings and they could be any size skinny or fat stick them in some water get the roots going and uh, once you see roots or the little root bumps stick them in some very gritty soil before you know it you end up with a tree a really really brilliant way of getting yourself into bonsai and starting yourself in the in the world of propagation so yeah quite a simple video today guys um what i'm trying to do is just promote the idea of propagating trees uh, whether that be by seed or by cuttings it's a very affordable if not free way of starting bonsai trees um, you don't need to buy bonsai soil you can just use regular compost or if you're really on a budget you could even use garden mud i mean you, you know you literally could just stick a cutting in garden mud and, and it will grow so it's a very very easy affordable way of getting yourself into into bonsai because the starting a tree from a young age i feel is the the best way of creating a bonsai tree you know, anybody can go out and buy something but if you start something from a young age you start it from a seed or you start it from a cutting and you see it on its journey you know you live your life with it you know so this is a little bit like a pet you know it's the shared experiences and the shared journey that you have with this tree and many many years down the line you know when you're looking at this tree and it's a magnificent looking bonsai tree you know that all of the care and attention and effort that when you know, this gone into it from your part has turned this what what once was a skinny little sapling into this very majestic looking bonsai tree and what better way to grow a bonsai tree than that and and it's something that i'm quite passionate about something that i continue to do uh what with all of the seeds and everything else that i've i've sown this autumn i think come come spring and summertime of next year we're going to end up with many many more trees to add to the collection but uh, yeah, but it's, it's it's the fun part of bonsai. So I really do recommend it. I really do suggest that you know that you go out there, collect some seeds from trees near you, stick them in a pot, and come next spring you should end up with with, with, with a little plant. And to look after it, and with the right care and attention, you could end up with a little bonsai tree. Um, yeah. Before I wrap up, I did just want to say another big thanks to Jamie over on Keeping It Koi. Uh, as I say, I will put a link to his channel in the description hello uh, great guy congratulations again on your two, the 2000 subscriber count that's brilliant keep up the great work and uh yeah i think i'll call that a day today uh, guys so thanks again for joining me as always take it easy have a great day and i'll uh, catch you on the next one